word tonight. As we go to the book of Hebrew, chapter number 13, we certainly desire that you pray with us tonight. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. The Bible says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Mm -hmm. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Somebody say, the Lord is my the helper. Lord is my helper. And look at what it says. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Yes, sir. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter number 6. We're going to try to move a little briefly here tonight. But we certainly hope and pray that God would give us a word. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank God. 2 Kings chapter 6, starting at verse number 13. And the Bible said, and he said, go and spy where he is. Mm -hmm. Then I may send and fetch him. And it was told, saying, told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. Mm -hmm. And they came by night and compared the city about. Right. And when the servant of the man of God were risen early and gone forth, yeah. behold, and host compared the city both with horses and chariots. Right. And the servant said unto him, at last, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Look at your neighbors and then just tell God, say, open the eyes. Open the eyes. Look at what it says, open his eyes that he may see what I see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Yes, God. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. Mm -hmm. Tell me your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you take your seat tonight. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get better. The things are not near as bad as you think. Right. A lot of times we look at the situation and circumstance and we feel like things are really, and uh, we feel like things are really, really bad. And so we look at the economy, we look at what things going on in the world, we listen to the news and stuff. And every time you turn on the news, all you hear is bad news. Right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They will stop calling the news and just call it bad news. Yeah, that's right. Every time you turn around, somebody getting raped, somebody getting robbed, yeah, somebody right. getting mugged. Somebody stealing something. Somebody bringing in some other house. Uh -huh. Everywhere you turn, they have drugs. A uh, 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 place where they have drug raids and stuff like that. So the current state of this world, we would say, is in shambles. When we look around, well, the Bible already explained it to us. The Bible says rights are exalted of nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Yes, sir. So we know what the problem is today. The problem is a sin problem. That's why this world is in such bad shape. That's why you see our political leaders, most of them are just messed all up. Most of them all they do is tell you a whole lot of lies, try to deceive you, try to make you uh, think something that's really not true. And so now when we look at the world, we look at the economy, and some of us can look at our life and we begin to think, man, things sure look bad. Amen. But I've come to tell you tonight, I want to reverse that thing tonight, that things are not near as bad as you Thank think you they are. are. Quit looking at the situation and say things are looking bad and start thing, saying things are getting better. <laughs> a lot of people look at a, uh, they can look at a, a, a half a glass of water and the first thing they say that it's half full. And somebody else said it's as if it's all according to how you look at it. If you look at it from a pessimistic point of view, you're always going to see the negative side of things. You're always going to think things are worse than what they really are. But if you learn how to be optimistic and learn how to have your faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. See, the Bible says faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not yet seen. And so now my faith tells me that things are getting better even though I don't see it yet. My faith tells me that I'm being healed even though I got pain racking in my body. My faith tells me that I'm blessed even though I don't have a dime in my pocket. And so now we got to understand that the Bible says the just shall live by their faith. And what the problem is, we look at the situation and circumstance more than we look at God. But we got to resist this mentality from, 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 from creating negative energy in our lives. Don't you understand that negative energy will make it, will drain you. Negative energy will make you not feel like going on. The songwriter composed a song and said, I feel like going on. A lot of times, people may have sung that song, really didn't feel like going on when they first started singing it. 
But there's something about when you begin to say something positive, speaking life into your situation. See, the Bible says that the power of death and life is in your tongue. So when you start speaking life in your situation, things going to turn around. But if you keep on speaking death, then bad things going to continue to happen in your life. We have to learn how, I'm talking about to trust God with everything that we have, with every situation, with every circumstance. No matter how bad it looks, we ought to always open our mouth and say things are getting better. So tonight, 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 I want to change the way you think tonight. I want to change your mindset tonight. I want to change your mindset from this negativity. I want you to, number one, I want you to stop listening to false evidence. Somebody say, what is that? That word fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. In other words, things are not really as bad as you think they just appear to be bad. And so it's all, it's all the way you perceive it to be. And so now that is an acronym, I'm talking about F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. But the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And so now if I walk by faith and not by sight, I can't walk, I can't look at, well, I, I can't walk by what I'm, I'm looking at, but I have to learn how to look at things through the eyes of God. Now the living Bible says we know these things are true by believing what we don't see. I like that because now it tells me that the things that I don't see are true. And so it may be a fact that I'm sick, but according to the scripture about Jesus Christ, I'm already here. It may be a fact that I'm going through right now, but the fact of the matter is, God going to be my present help in a time of trouble. It may be a fact that it looks like the world is stacked up against me, but when I got God on my side, me and God make a majority. Clap your hands right there and tell them thank you. And so now what we have to do, we have to learn how, number two, fix your eyes. Fix your eyes and keep your eyes on one promise from God, on God's word today. And things will start to change your life. When we look in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 18, the Bible says, but we Christians have no veil over our faces. We can see, uh, we can be mirrors, rather, that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. And as the spirit of the Lord working within us, we become more and more like him. And so now I look in the book, and when I look in the book, I don't see where Jesus ever was defeated. I don't care what Jesus went through. Even when they when they decided to crucify him, he already told us that no man taking my life. He said, I lay it down that I may pick it up again. Even when the enemy had crucified him and put him in a borrowed grave, the enemy thought that he was not going to rise, but he had already told us on the third day he was going to rise. And so now when I look at what the Bible says, the Bible says we don't have a veil of our face. You know, in the Old Testament, they had to go behind the veil. But we don't have to go behind the veil. We can get into the presence of God. And the Bible says we can become mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. When I look in the Old Testament, when I look in the book of Genesis, the Bible said God said and it was and so now when I look at what the word said that I was made in the image and the likeness of God and so a lot of people they just look at their man side the fleshless side they don't look at the spiritual side but the fact of the matter is the first thing you have to understand that you are a spirit that closed in a body uh, some of y'all didn't catch that tonight I said you are a spiritual being and so now there is something on the inside of you that longs to, to feel the very presence of God and so that's why when you was in the world you tried all kinds of crazy stuff you did your drugs and you did your you live your promiscuous sexual lifestyle and you did your alcohol you did everything trying to I'm talking about to get high trying to forget about your trouble forget about your situation but there's something about after you got saved all of a sudden things didn't look near as bad as you think they were it because now God has changed your mindset the Bible says the Bible says the third thing we want to do is fall in love with surely look at your neighbor and say fall in love with surely because the psalmist says surely goodness and love and kindness shall follow you all the days of your life now God cannot lie and God says surely goodness and kindness going to follow me all the days of my life and so I don't care what nobody will say about it I don't care what nobody will think about it goodness and oh, oh Lord have mercy goodness and mercy going to follow me all the days of my life goodness and love and kindness going to follow me all the days of my life who am I talking to today they're not looking at the situation but they're looking at the word of God so when I look at what this word says when I read this word God is actually talking back to me 
And so God tell me that goodness and love and kindness will follow me all the days of my life. Now somebody said, preacher, well look, I've been going through hell and high water. That's all right. God said goodness and love and kindness going to follow you all the days of your life. And so now it looked like the situation had reversed what the scripture has said. 